If you can paint a picture of God doing it, go ahead and do that with him. If your life doesn't paint the picture of who God is, then understand that the power of the Holy Ghost is present and available for you to change right now so that you look like him, so that you bear the image. The image, I said, the image. I said the glory. I said the very express person of the living God. I said his, I said his fire. You know, when you talk about his presence, you talk about it on the extreme level of a fire. His presence is like a fire. When you get in a fire, I don't care if your little finger gets in a fire. It, it touches your whole body. If your little finger touches a fire, your whole body feels it. You start screaming. Ah! But God touch you tonight. Say, Lord, break me free of the things that keep my passions from responding to you. Ask him now. All you have to do is ask him, Lord, break me free of the things that causes or keeps my emotions from fully responding to you. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there's no end to it. Believe me, there is no end to it. You think now, you, oh, my goodness, you, there is no, you know, you just fully responsive. And he said, no, 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 I got another level for you. You do. I'm going to explode if I, do, if I go to another level. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll give you the capacity. I'll give you capacity to stay in one piece. I'm so blessed to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus, to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. But listen to me. I'm not happy with where I'm at in God. Not when I know that all of his fullness is mine. I'm not happy with my ability to interact with him and what I can do to in the receptivity realm. When I know that he wants me to light up with his glory. Huh? When I know that, that visions and dreams are continually mine. When I know that whatever I ask him to do, he'll do it if I'll step over into that deeper realm of cooperation with him. Hallelujah. See, I believe, the thing, I believe what God said to be true. I believe everything else to be a lie. I believe everything else is in the category of wrong. God, God is the only one that's in the category of right. And I want in every way to be conformed to the right. So how does Father do that? He produces hunger on the inside of us to want what He has, and He produces faith on the inside of us to receive it. You hear me now? He produces hunger on the inside of us to want what He has, and He produces faith on the inside of us to receive it. It is not a passionate list. Well, we're here again tonight. Aren't we a faithful group? We're here, we're, here to, we're here to move something around. And we're going to start with you. You can start with you. You move yourself around. Move, pick yourself up and move yourself over into the right place. Hallelujah. If you're in the wrong place, move yourself over in the right place tonight. Your attitudes may be in the wrong place. You can pick yourself and move yourself up over into the right place. What authority. What power. You will never be able to transmit anything other than what you've received. And then you get yourself in, you know, you praying God using, you get yourself in a place where people are hungry to receive from heaven. You can't do nothing. You can't do nothing. They're just standing there waiting. Nothing's happening. You're going to have to be willing to press into a realm because no man has anything until he first receives it from heaven. And Father, here tonight, what's to you receive from him? And he has an unlimited supply of divine power and glory available to you. You've got to want it more than anything else. When you do, he gives you the faith to receive it. He gives you the faith to receive it. There's an open vision here tonight with details in it. Oh, yeah, God's a God of vision. There's an encounter with him tonight. He wants that. Father wants it. Because it's through the encounter that all of a sudden, everything about your life begins to yield more. He's not going to come impose himself on you. He's not going to force himself into your world. He won't force himself into our world. So as we begin, begin to praise him tonight, 
as we begin to worship him tonight. Invite the Holy Spirit to come do what it is he desires to do. And I would take it to another level. And say, oh God, I can't live without the moving of your spirit. If I didn't have what I have right now as I'm talking to you, I'd go in the corner and cry. One time, Daniel, I had Daniel preach. It was early on, and I think he was like only 18 at the time, something like that. I went away. I said, Dad, you preach. And the, he just, the anointing didn't feel, he didn't feel the anointing strong. He felt a lot of opposition. He went in the corner and cried after it was all over. It's the right thing to do. Father sees that. You know, and, and he did a fine job, but just, you know, he, he wanted that realm. He wanted to be able to touch that realm. We want you to know what the realm is so whether so you know whether or not you're missing it <laughs> you know what i'm saying you gotta have a contrast you gotta have a contrast i hear people tell all sounds oh i love jesus so much i love him i'm sure you do bless your heart you ain't ever touched him you ain't ever encountered him you don't know who he is you know about him you don't know who he is because once you do he'll make your heart so tender don't take no three, four, five, ten years either. Three, four, five, ten minutes. That's about all it takes. I've watched people come out of darkness into three, four, five, ten minutes, something like that, overwhelmed by the glory of God. They have an encounter with Him. Everything about their life has changed. They have a measure of what that defines for them what it means to interact with the living God. And from that day forward, they ruin. Because they're not going to sit around just... Yawn, look at the watch, open up bottle of water, <laughs> put the lid back on it. I mean, you're not speaking. You know what I'm saying? If you were talking and singing that passionately, if you've been dancing all over the place and you're sweating buckets, I mean, I can understand why you're drinking and sipping on the water. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, it's kind of rude, actually, to tell you the truth. It's a bit rude, it's a bit distracted. You, are you, you under, can you understand what I'm trying to drive in at here? Can I want to help you? I don't really want to insult anybody. I want to correct you. I want to correct you in the areas that's keeping you from moving forward in God and hope God. Because I'm telling you, right now, the world needs to see Jesus. They don't need to hear another, they don't need to hear another religious message. They need to see the power of God, the message revealed. The Word of God made flesh. The signs and wonders, the miracles of the power of God. You're going to have to touch heaven for that to happen. I'm going to tell you what happens. You touch God tonight, you'll never be the same. You'll just stand there and go, Father, I can't believe I've acted like I've acted. I just didn't really, I knew about you, I just didn't know you. Or you could just go ahead and be whatever it is you want to be. Not with, and, and be absent of an encounter with his glory. And be afflicted by the sorrows of this life and the cares of this world. And always and forever unsatisfied. Because religion cannot satisfy. Not be filled up. When you're filled up, you know what, one of the most important whether one of the most, for me, one of the most important witnesses of being filled up with God. He's so desperate. He's so desperate for more. He becomes so sensitive to him, the slightest little wind of the spirit. Your cells are up. Uh, you're being blown all over the place. Because all your heart, all your emotions, all your affections are in heaven. Everything that's going on in heaven, it touches every part of your being. There's no part of it that's earthly and part of it heavenly. It's all heavenly. If you give yourself tonight and then from this night forward to stepping in to the manifest presence of the Lord every day, what's going to happen is that will get stronger and stronger in your life. Then you'll be a carrier of his manifest presence. If any walked into a room, walked into a place of business, and other men like him, and other women like him, and people were 
mowed under the power of God and the Holy Ghost conviction touched with the glory of heaven because of his encounter with God. Not because he was, had a special election that only a few people can have because of his encounter. It's just that he came to a crisis in his life where he wanted to know God more than anything else. And he saw the door open, so he went on in. Some people want to know God more than anything else, but to them, the door's closed. The door's not really closed. It's a deception. Religion closes the door. See, that's what happened. Jesus says, you don't go into the kingdom of God to the religious, and those who would go in, you prevent. How do they prevent them? With their doctrines and their ideas. Listen to me tonight. I'm, just, I'm helping you. Believe this. Believe this. We can adopt in things that we believe in our lives. That we can be convinced are of God. And they're keeping us from this wonderful realm of His divine revelation to us. Interaction, relationship with Him. I discovered this. If I'm not getting or having these things in my life, the manifest presence of the Lord in my life, like I know Father wants me to have, all I'm going to do is go up and erase the chalkboard of my life. I just erase everything. I erase it all, and I put on there two words, only you. Ha! And I'm back at it. Okay? Go ahead and build this out now, Lord. Because that's it. I just want, I want your power and your glory to touch me now. I want your power and your glory to touch me now. I want your power and your glory to touch me now. I'm not going to sit silent. I'm not going to have, I'm not going to be in the yawning section. I'm going to make a special section probably for churches of America. Like we have the blind section, the deaf section. I'm going to make a yawning section. And everybody on, so you, you belong in the yawning section. So right back over there. We've got a special ministry to you after the meeting. Just go ahead and yawn, fall asleep. We'll get to you in a little bit. Now, for me, it's a manifestation of procrastination and the spirit of slothfulness. Everything's made manifest in his presence. So, no, 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 that's not what it is. It's just a physiological function. You have your physiological function. I'll have my manifestation of what's really going on. Because I'm going to tell you right now, in the presence of the Lord, you wide awake. In the presence of God, when the Spirit of the Lord is moving like it is right now, like His prayer is moving right now, like His glory is here right now, as the vis for me, the visibility has already been impacted. Hallelujah. The glow effect's already in, it, already happening. So am I. Hallelujah. Shukaratai. Hushare matai. Italamosai. I want it for you. I want it for you. I want it for you. Your knowing, your knowing has to turn into your glowing. I mean, listen to me. Your knowing, what you know, has to turn into a practical showing. What you, what you believe has to manifest in a realm of reality. Otherwise, it's for nothing. It's in vain. It has not profited you. And I say these things to provoke you to love and to good works so you're not going to say, wait a minute, uh, just because I got a head full of knowledge and I know the Bible from cover to cover and I know where to find every verb and adjective. Huh? I mean nothing. Let me see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. You know what Father wants to see? Jesus. Father wants to see Jesus. Huh? You know what Jesus wants to see? Holy Ghost. That's what he wants to see, Holy Ghost. I'm going to give... Hallelujah. I'm going, yeah, yeah. Yes! That's exactly what I want, Father. That's exactly what I want, Lord Jesus. Ah! Now, whatever, whatever you really want and you're passionate about in God, you can have. It'll be yours overnight. I don't care what it is. It'll be yours overnight. You want to increase in the power of the Holy Ghost where you lay hands on people and they all of a sudden receive the things of the Spirit? As long as your heart's right, not like Simon. As long as your heart's right, you can have it overnight. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. 
See, Simon discovered that you could have that power just by the laying on of hands. How many seconds did that take? How many years did that take? Get your hand. Here are the hands coming. Hands coming. Four months later, hands still coming. Two years, hands still coming. No, it's Receive. Simon seeing that the power of the Holy Ghost was given by the laying on the hands. He said, lay hand, let, you let me have this power, I'll give you money. So that whomever I lay my hands on, they can receive the same glory. This is what Father has for us tonight. Jesus. Now you don't even get to begin to be a witness of the resurrection until you get this. All you have is sounding like a tingling cymbal and a sound of breast, you know, selling a used car for some, you know, you know. She a petty guy. Louis. <laughs> Louis Chia Petty. And his brother Vinny. And you got a quota, you got a name. Come on. Heaven collect. Let God fill your mouth with praise. So that every word behind it will also have the effect of heaven. Amen. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, living God. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. Oh, hallelujah.
During the days before Jesus Christ, the eternal Word of God was made flesh, Father trying to describe to mankind, as well as making a provision for Him, of what redemption would look like and how He would pay our price for us, would cause that a person would bring an offering usually a lamb little lamb and he would lean upon the lamb and he would confess his sins it's called in the Old Testament the hand leaning right and whether it was a priest a king just any ordinary everyday person if they had sinned if they had done anything against the ways of God they brought this offering they leaned upon it and tonight we had the so glorious privilege of come grabbing hold of him and leaning on him and confessing our sins and what he did 2,000 years ago sops it all up absorbs it all <laughs> erases it all what an amazing God. There is absolutely no reason for anybody in this place to have any guilt any longer, any shame any longer, any sickness any longer, any disease physically, any disease spiritually. There's no reason for it. You know, the woman with the issue of blood, she could have wanted to have, she could have believed as much as anybody else believed that Jesus is Savior and Healer. But until she pressed in and touched him, it would mean nothing. She could believe and be certain and persuaded that all one had to do was touch the hem of his garment and they would be made perfectly whole. But until she actually did that, until she touched the realms of divine power and glory, 
it was only a hope. It was only maybe even a certainty. Tonight, there's nothing that's, all that stands between you and Christ Jesus are the illusions that you've created, the lies that you've believed, the falsehoods that you've cre set up for yourself. Because he's made it very clear, the truth has made it very clear that he's right here, that he's with you and in you. Why can't you turn your heart right now? Why would you just stand and listen to me? Why would not this word of God activate within you a response? Because there's people standing in here tonight, you have sickness in your body. You have disease in your body. You have problems in your heart. You have problems in your spirit. You have problems in your relationship. God is the miracle worker that changes everything instantaneously in a moment. He doesn't need no big gigantic process of time. The only process of time that exists is you and I pressing in to touch him. Deciding. Sometimes it takes people to get very desperate before they really they begin to really cry. I want you to I want you to be a part of the hand leaning right. I want you to take whatever that you need it. I want you to take whatever problems, whatever issue, whatever sin. And I want you to come. I want you to lay hold on your lamb, your offering. There remaineth now no more sacrifice for sin. I want you to take a hold of the provision that God has given, the reality of that provision that's here right now, Christ Jesus. I want sickness and disease to come to an end in your life tonight. Maybe some of you have to come to terms with things that you've allowed in your life that are not right with God. They're things that are not, that are disobedience. They're things that are those acts that He does not want to have in your life. Attitudes. Well, all you got to do is consecrate yourself afresh to the Lord tonight and say, Father, I thank you for removing all those things out of my way. I thank you for removing my sins from me as far as the east is from the west. I thank you, Father God, for creating within me this new heart that you've given to me and now strengthening me to walk in the right way. And you make that simple statement before the Lord and everything begins to get changed. Everything begins to change. Ha. <laughs> Everything begins to change. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The presence of Jesus. The mighty working of His power right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. And whatever you have need of, it's yours. Whatever you have need of. Whatever you desire. Whatever you have need of. Whatever you have need of. Sabakaramanga le bere bedebra batoro so reki di arababatasas. Just receive right now. Ha. Just receive right now. Just receive right now. Ah, kapaya. Ah, kapaya. Ah, Kapaya. Just receive right now. Just receive right now. Just receive right now. Look out of Manzazera. Just receive right now. Just receive right now. Zagada Bachi Zeki Dalamo. Just receive right now. What does it, what does it, what does it take? What does it take to move out of a realm where you don't feel his presence or you're not being touched by him to being captivated and overwhelmed by his glory? A radical pursuit. What does that look like? It looks like something very passionate. It looks like I'm, de it looks determined. It looks like it's, when you know that God, every time, every moment of every day, God hands for you. 
a wonderful, overwhelming encounter of His presence, there'd be there'd be no way you'd stay. There'd be no way you would be without it. I want you to just begin to worship in the Holy Ghost. I want you just to begin to worship in the Spirit. I want you to begin to basakara mandalea patara mandaya fiata kara shapataya ropa pana ishoto ropa paranea ishopa ropa toramaya. Let your glory fill this place, oh God. Let your glory fill this place, oh Lord. Your wellsprings, Jesus. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Blessed is the Holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. Here I am, I'm here. 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 Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, 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 holy. Go, Rama Manger, Rama Mandala, Nana Gibra. O ki abrava sa tara Rama Manger, Rebe. O brava sa tolo lo kor, Rama Mando, Rebe. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. He am a man, dala man, jero, ma man, dala bebe, lebe ko, man daia. Ha. Koro ma man daso, koro ma man brebe. Let your rivers flow out, Holy Ghost. Father, let your glory show forth in the midst of your people. Let your power, O oh God, be revealed in the midst of your church, O oh God. Your glory now, O oh God. Your glory now, O oh Lord. Your glory now, O oh God. Your glory, Lord. Your glory now. Your glory now. Outpouring of your presence, the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost, 
the great outpouring of your presence. You just keep lifting up your voice. You keep crying out. I'll sing. You pray. <laughs> Tell you touch heaven. Tell heaven touches you. Tell the power of God on the world. Tell the power of God on the world. Your life tonight. Touch heaven. Touch heaven. Touch heaven. Touch heaven. Touch heaven. Touch Jesus. Touch Jesus. Touch Jesus. Touch Jesus. Let the power of the living God flow out of you right now. Let the anointing flow freely from your life right now. Just lift your voice and cry out to God. Say, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lift your voice till heaven touches you. Kabla mama kere bebri balso toro mo bo kure se rebe yo buku mama ne. Soko toro mo bli bebre bebi na mama ne. Kere be, kere be, kere be. Sarabamba <laughs> So kora manda na na manjere be koki na na mande fra mane onu. a heavenly realm <laughs> and it all belongs to you mangalesha pera nayande kirimanjala la la mangalesha prana naya hamara nange ramana nande ramasala la mana nana mana naya nasera mane kirimamana la la mangalesha ramala naya oh there's a heavenly realm <laughs> and it all belongs to you Hallelujah. Ah, there is a heavenly realm where the glory of God will rapture you. Hallelujah. 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 There is no reason that anybody be sick or anybody be in with the disease. The only reason is that we don't touch the realm of heaven and then we make all these kinds of doctrines up like God's changed his word or is, is, it, is willing to allow us to rewrite his word. Say, well, God doesn't always heal and healing, blah, 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 and a bunch of nonsense. And the reality of it is is that we've not been willing to be led by the Holy Ghost into his presence. If we're willing to be led by the Holy Ghost in His presence, if we're willing to be, be, really just stand up and say, no, 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 I'm not going to be without the things that God has provided. The woman with an issue of blood had all the reasons. If you want an excuse and you want doctrine, she had all the reasons and all the doctrines not to touch Jesus. Number one, she had an issue of blood, and so the Word of God said that she was not allowed to be in the camp. And nobody was able to touch her. And if she touched anybody or they touched her, they were made unclean. 
And she was actually in a position that she could potentially even be stoned for subjugating everybody to uncleanness. Did that doctrine stop her? Then, furthermore, she was 18 years in the condition, spent all the money that she had, so she didn't have any money to get to the meeting in the first place. Did that stop her? And then besides that, when she got there where she's so weak, how is she supposed to ever get anywhere near him? Because all these strong people around him, this great cr crowd of people around him, how is, he, is she even supposed to get anywhere near him? What, she doesn't have a pass to sit on the front row? There is not a sick, sec sick section. she got to crawl on her hands and knees, work her way through the feet. she got to be kicked around a bit. She had every excuse that there could imagine. She had every reason that she could imagine. But she decided she didn't want to be sick and diseased anymore. She wanted to touch the realm and the source of divine health the divine healing. People, we are willing to accommodate things that God has already remedied and cured. And people want to start feeling all bad about themselves because they don't have it. Would you please... Will you just get as much of a gumption as the woman with the issue of blood had? Would you get enough realm of faith that she wasn't baptized in the Holy Ghost? She didn't have all of this divine power and ability at work in her life that, he, that you have these Pentecostal people have in your life. And she took a little bit and did so much more than so many people do today. They just accommodate things. They settle out with things. They make peace agreements with them the sickness with disease with sin with iniquity with wrong attitudes wrong feelings things that are not heavenly father wants us to have days of heaven upon the earth he wants us to live in the realms of heaven in the old testament deuteronomy chapter 11 he said just obey my word and you'll have days of heaven upon the earth now it makes it even better just says walk in the spirit be filled with the holy ghost tonight i don't want you to leave out of this place without being touched by the power of God and overwhelmed by the inspirations of the spirit of truth, this life's giving spirit. God, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He wants to strike you in a way that you've never been touched, be, touched, be, touched before. Hallelujah. It's true. Woo. And when, when that happens, you have feelings that you never had before. You have experienced emotions, joy that you never had before, love that you have never had before. It is amazing to me. Religious people sit in the seat of religion with, 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 with stubbornness and rebellion and, and unwillingness to hear God, but yet they'll doctrinally say, oh, the fullness of God. Oh, yeah, all the love of God is available for us. And then they, they live in a thimbleful. Why? If you believe that all the love of God is available for you, then why don't you press in and take hold of it? Because obviously you don't believe. You know, it, 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 I get provoked on days like this, like today because religion has tried to claim this most sacred day. And you know the feeling, the experience of religion, dealing with religion, shuts down the move of the Holy Ghost. Religion shuts down the move of the Holy Ghost. Tries to account around me. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to push right through the whole thing. I won't tolerate it. Don't tolerate sickness in your body. Don't tolerate disease in your body. Don't tolerate hindrance in your body. Don't tolerate doubt in your mind. Don't tolerate a, a, a sense of being estranged from His glory and from His presence. Don't tolerate it, not for a second. Don't tolerate not having a manifest presence of the Lord in your life. And if that's the, if you get if that becomes the state of your heart, Hallelujah! <laughs> then you'll be continually filled with the Spirit. <laughs> if 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 being continually filled with the Spirit wasn't available, the Lord wouldn't have said, "Be continually filled with the Spirit." Ah, ah, Ramonze. How about, how, how about we just be a people of God that's dedicated to it? I don't know. I'm sure that there's a lot of people all over the world dedicated to this wonderful realm. But I'm a, I don't really, you know, it's not really my responsibility. And I don't really know for sure. But I know what's going on here. 
And I'm just going to say to you, why don't you just go ahead and give yourself to being continually filled up with this realm? You sit around my table, and you're going to hear about ways that we're going to ways we're going to advance the kingdom of God, ministries that we're going to start, visions, that and dreams. You're going to hear all you're going to hear is about the Word of God, the Spirit of God, what God's doing through us and with us. That's all you're going to hear about. We want that to be what's going on around your table too. That's what we want you to begin to live the glorious life that Jesus died, went to hell. Rose up on the third day, seen on many witnesses, sent it up on high, exalted the right hand of the Father, and poured forth the Holy Ghost so you and I could have. Amen. Hallelujah. Kahadaka. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Just see, I want you to sing that one more time. Jesus, Jesus. More of you, Lord Jesus. All of you and none of me. Jesus, Jesus. More of Jesus. All of Jesus. None of me. Jesus, Jesus. Mama, 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 It's really simple. See, Father's made it so easy. For us to just simply, with our mouth, with our request, allow Him to live instead of all the stuff that messes us up. Where then all that people can see is our problems and our frustration and our worry and our concern and our torment. Because we simply refuse to just call upon the name of the Lord who comes and delivers us out of all of our problems. God has made it so easy so that we might live out His life, so that His Son might be revealed in us, so it would be Jesus, and only Jesus. Now I'm determined, Raphael, that you're just going to live this life. I see you as a candidate. We're going to have to spend 20 years with you. Wrestling every meeting, arm wrestling you, getting your head locked, holding you over. Come on. Missed opportunity to get you talked into just letting God live. It's time, man. It's time that people begin to just step into what God has freely given. Quit hanging out in the court of the Gentiles. Come on in. Oh, hallelujah looking a way off, far away. Those of you who've lived that life, those of you who've been just so caught up in yourself, you can't break out. Tonight, won't you break out? So those of you just been so imprisoned by your own emotion, by your own circumstance. Those of you that have been imprisoned by things that have come out against you whether it's been sin or sickness or disease tonight won't you break out and get liberated and go ahead and go to heaven just break out just break out right now out of that realm of doubt and unbelief.
you can be seated. Just be seated for a few minutes here. I want you to understand that the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Huh. <laughs> He's anointed us to liberate you out of your prison. So what's going to happen it is the meet, in the meeting, as the meeting progresses, people become overwhelmed with the glory of God, the presence of the Lord, because we've anointed to break people out of the prison. But the Lord would like for you to now stay out of your prison and not go back lock yourself in the cell. Tonight, we would like for you to compare and contrast yourself with Jesus. Tonight, we would like you to look at the attitudes that are going on in your life and see if those attitudes are going on in Jesus' life. We would like you to look at your demeanor, your disposition, see if that demeanor and disposition is upon Jesus. See if there's anything going on about your life that doesn't look at and feel and act just like him. And then if you find something in your life that's going on that's not going on in Jesus' life, why don't you just be willing to just shut it down and now begin to shine with the image, to be conformed to the image. It's, it's your will. Nobody, nobody can force you to do this. If you think that Jesus is sitting all around all sad and contemplative tonight, I'm sorry. It's you. Somebody gave you a wrong testimony of who he is. He's not easy. I'm telling you right now, he's just full of exceeding joy. I'm telling you, uh, there is an excitement. There is a love of life that's more beautiful and more wonderful than anything that you've ever expressed when you got some news that just so excited you and made you jump up and down. You know, you were so excited till you basically exa got exhausted. I don't know how long. Sometimes I think people get exhausted in the first 30 seconds. Maybe people are that sick. I'm out of shape. The Lord to heal your body. You ever had a, such things happen in your life like that caused you to be happy all week? All day. And he was like happy such a long time. And then all of a sudden some other circumstance came along and now it had imposed its issues upon you. Now you're back, you're back to being sad or not quite as happy and, and giddy. I tell you, there is... In his presence is fullness of joy. There is a walk with God to where that, that happy, that place of happy, that place of just so excited... Just everything's working out perfectly. It's awesome. Remember that time, that day, that event where, you know, the things were coming your way and you knew you were going to have provision for everything and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the pathway forward and the future was all clear and it was all good and there was no more reason to be concerned or worry because now everything has come into place. You remember how gloriously wonderful you felt? How confident you were? God has something greater for you than that. And it's not based upon any circumstance. It is called walking in the Spirit and living in the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit. Because God the Holy Ghost brings heaven to us. What happens is people step into, into a move of God and they have this, this first love and they have this joy and they have this excitement for the first while of their walk with the Lord. And then they either begin to get infected literally infected not affected but infected by religion by ideas or they become overwhelmed by circumstances or situations disappointments and they become imprisoned by that and it locks them away from the things that god has for them and they just mitigate their circumstance and bless their hearts they go on go to church every time the meeting takes place and they're still just as unhappy and still just as sad and still just as unfulfilled and still just as far away from the move of God as they were when they first believed. And that is, the, that is what goes on in much of the church community. 
and it's time for revival it's time for a, re, a returning you see before there is a revival there has to be a turning back to God if we turn back to him he will revive us read this verse of scripture to you here real quickly a wonderful beautiful passage of scripture in Isaiah chapter 56 and I'm just going to just call your attention to Isaiah 56 and verse 1 if there's any chapter of the Bible you'd like to memorize this is another good candidate thus saith the Lord keep judgment and do righteousness for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness is about to be revealed we know that 2,000 years ago it was the last day we know that Jesus said that he was coming quickly and how much more now I mean Paul said to the Romans that our time is now closer to the end and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ nearer than when we first believed and how much more true is that for us today in the context of what God has purposed to do in the strategies of God on the timetable of God knowing and discerning the day and the time that we're in we know that this is the last day and in the last day that God would have a great company of people who would be strong who would know their God and they would do exploits that's what God showed to Daniel what God showed to other prophets like the prophet Joel is that he would have a mighty army fearless in the anointing their faces would be like lions they would have such a boldness I mean I think one of the great things that shocked the world when Jesus came was his authority and then they saw that same authority in in unlearned men like Peter and James and John that were just fishermen they see these guys come on the scene who are these men with such authority they have an authority that goes beyond the look of a king and the most wealthiest men in the world in the in the earth well they were struck by the anointing could you imagine that there is an opportunity tonight to be willing to respond to the Holy Ghost and come over into a realm with him which we would call or the Word of God would call a consecrated realm where he would do through us more than he did through Daniel in the days of Daniel that he would do more in, in our lives more than he did in the days of Paul uh, to recognize that father has an authority that we can walk in that is his own authority how big is that how glorious is that when we think about walking in an authority we have to be, we have to begin to consider the ramifications of what that means and the dimensions by in which that may be confined or unlimited or uncontained and especially when we begin to consider that the Lord Jesus Christ has all authority in heaven and earth that his authority is above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and that he has given to us that authority and father expects us to walk in it but yet we're imprisoned by all the stuff the Bible said we would be imprisoned by if we didn't listen to him and we have the fruits that we are in prison because the Lord made it very clear what we were going to do have to do if we were going to get his results and religions will religion will confine you to a place of not having the results but self justifying your condition religion will confine you to a place of not having the results but will self-justify you where you're at don't let deception have impact on you because we're in the last days we know that God's got a mighty army that he's raising up those who walk around in the precious fruit that the husbandman has long patience for as James described a description of a glorious church and glorious can only be defined by his glory a glorious church can only be defined by the full manifestation of the person Jesus Christ 
You can't have a glorious church because it is a, you know, it's made of spectacular stone. Because it has expensive wall coverings and floor coverings and furnishings. It's glorious because the power and the dimensions of heaven fill the place. It's beautified with all those things that belong to those who are part of the family of God that flow naturally from us. The gifts of healing. My, if we have them to give, oh, then there's plenty for us to, to partake of while we're giving them out. So thus we get to live in divine health and never have to have a day of sickness. The world, the church has drifted far into the world and they're blind in the darkness of the world and can't see all that God has freely given to us as he's made us heirs, his heirs and co-inheritors of Jesus. That's not something that's just in the future, that's something that's right now. But you're going to have to believe the good word of God. And you're going to have to lay hold on it. And all these things. Oh, you see, you got too many other alternatives. you got so many things stacked up alongside God. I can say to the Hindus in Nepal, I can say you can have no gods alongside of Jesus. you got to throw them all away. You've got to cast them all away and take Jesus alone. They know exactly what I mean. Because they bow down and they worship those deities made of stone and plaster. But in the Western world, people can't see. They've exalted all kinds of things within their life that is keeping them from the purity of interacting with the one who shaped us, who created us and shaped us and breathed into us and made us a living being and then redeemed us with his own blood and baptized us in his own glory. Now see, I'm part of the church. And I demand to have the fruit of the church. Thus, I will always prophesy in the meeting. Always. If I sat in a meeting and didn't prophesy, I'd, I would have to confess I'm backslidden. I'm away from the Holy Ghost. I have lost my place in God. Because the Word of God talks about how that in the last days he'll pour out his spirit upon all flesh and you would prophesy. And your sons and your daughters would prophesy. When Ruthiana was born, she would be our last one. And we did exactly with her what we did with the others. We said, Lord, let her, your anointing come upon her that she may prophesy. Anoint her. Hmm? God anointed her. Then everybody who touched her in a wrong way lost the anointing. And never going to get it back. Or they, they, they isolate themselves from the anointing and can never have it till they repent. And so it is. And it's multiplied again and again. Not only with, I'm just using Ruth Ann as an exa example because she's least in my family. Huh? Because he's a baby. And the baby's getting married. In 10 days and 23 hours. Twenty-four minutes, thirteen seconds. <laughs> and so that small supply, that situation is multiplied because Satan knows what he can do to stop a glorious church, to stop a precious fruit of the earth, to stop the expression of that explosive power of God that is supposed to be witnessed in our midst. And we have too many affections going on inside. Affections for houses, affections for land, affections for cars, affections for relationships around us that we've exalted even above God. Affections for food, affection for finer things, affection for gold, for money, for bank accounts. They all play on us. And so if there's something messed up, it jerks our emotions right over into its realm. And we're completely out of, out, out, out of pocket, if you would, or out of connectivity with the Holy Ghost and so Satan knowing that because there's so many earthly and worldly 
cares attached to our heart pulls his string and we do his dance. And he constantly keeps us from the connectivity that Father has purposed for us to have. So there's got to be in a total abandonment and turning away from all that stuff. So it can no longer have a, a place of affections within you or touch you inside your emotions and your feelings and your appetite. It's got to come to a place where you want nothing. You have no care for anything in this life. But you're, you are exploding with passion. And you're exploding with vision and determination over the kingdom of God. I tell people all the time, I'm going to conquer the world without any ambition. There's no ambition, no earthly ambition. It's a heavenly vision. Somebody said, oh, well, you can't say that. No, you can't say that. I can say that. Because I'm in him and he's in me. And he's already conquered everything. And I'm supposed to go everywhere doing his bidding. One day I had Carlos Anaconda looking at me and said, Mark, you can't, you can't reach everybody. You can't go everywhere. And I'm thinking, why he's saying that? Who says? I was polite. I said, I'm not going to be confined to that. Why? I'm not going to confine God. You know, if Father ends up in these last days with maybe just a hundred folks throughout the world that are willing to fully believe him, he'll just translate them all over the place. And he'll do his work with a hundred. He did his work with 300 in Gideon's day. He wants to use everyone. But if people want to just carry on with their life and then ultimately come to the end of their life and say, what have I done? At what place in my life did I ever sacrifice really anything or lay down my life at any time or risk body and limb for the kingdom? It's going to come. The day's going to come. And for some of you, it's getting closer all the time. You know, my wife has finally come into terms with the fact that we're not slowing down and we're speeding up. We have to because we're getting older. Because we're running out of time here. And we're going to take our place among those that Jesus redeemed with his blood and that uh, whom the grace of God was not bestowed upon them in vain. I ask myself, I look in the mirror of, of my own life and I say, was your grace bestowed upon me in vain or have I labored with it with everything that is within me? And all I say is, at the event and the evaluation, oh God, strengthen me to be more fiery, more ferocious, more determined, more willing to go, more ready, Lord, to pour it all out upon the altar of sacrifice. More determined to lay hold on you, more determined to walk in your signs and your wonders and your miracles. Ain't nothing happened in my life to discourage me or disappoint me. It just basically caused me to step up with that much more passion to get this thing right time that people allow God to be God in their life and they begin to receive receive the strength of the Lord and they become valiant instead of cowardly if I to make you a valiant or you'll make you a coward the Lord causes us to wax valiant and fight ah hallelujah God's got a glorious church and you're going to have to get into the glory. You have to get into the glory to be a part of the glorious church. You have to step into the glory. You can sit there with all your sad looks and disappointed expressions and say, yeah, praise God, I'm in the glory if you want. But my goodness, I don't define that as glory. I don't see Jesus doing that. I don't see that. If I had to look at that and think that that's what I was going to stare at when I come into his presence, I'd be um, all men most miserable. Are you with me? We go tell people about abundant life and we look like we just been drugged through a knot hole backwards. Give me a break. Father wants your face to, to light up. He wants you to shine with a boldness and with a confidence. He wants you to come to them with the person, the answer, with, the, with the answers that their heart has been longing for. I guarantee you start doing that, you're going to start getting souls. You're going to start getting souls. You know, I look at the people in this church that are that have I I monitor how many people how many souls people reach. I do. I'm a pastor, I monitor how fruitful you are. Ruth Anna is one of the biggest soul winners in this church. I can name you. I can name you. I, I'm just talking about different people here tonight. But I'm gonna focus on her. 
She's one of the biggest soul winners in the place. She reaches more people. She brought more people in the church to stay in the church. And yet, what will happen, and I'm going to use this example, what will happen is Satan will make her a target of disgust and ridicule. That's what it always does. That's being multiplied again and again in the church. I'm just saying. That's Satan's strategy to shut down everything that is living, everything that is active, everything that is viable, everything that has a holy contagion. He runs interference. He creates things that don't even exist. And only people in the pride of their life and in the pride and the arrogancy of their own thinking can believe the lie. Because if you walk in humility and brokenness before God as servants one to another, you'd never believe such a lie. You'd never hear such an evil report. You'd be so connected. Even when people are weak and don't do anything and they're still too spiritually weak to bring forth. The reproductive organs are still undeveloped in the spirit. God's got a miracle for you. God has a miracle for you. God, the Holy Ghost, does a miracle for you. And it begins with a miracle of relationship with Him. It begins with a miracle of such revelation that you know He's here. Oh. Father, I just thank you so much for your presence. I thank you so much for your glory. I thank you so much for your anointing. I thank you for this fellowship. And then where, what happens is that becomes an outworking. One day, let's just talk about baby here for a little while. After Sunday night service, I believe it was her Wednesday night service, she was out warming up for track and she just humming a song, worship song. All of a sudden, a girl ran over and bit her twice on the arm. And then the girl goes, oh, forgive me. She, well, I don't know what happened to me. I don't know what came over me. And so Ruthanna said, I'll tell you what happened. The demon power that runs and controls your life, they became close friends. The demon power that runs and controls your life hates the anointing. She gets completely out of control. Is that weird or what? Was that happening to you lately? That's what the anointing can do for you. The anointing causes people to begin to manifest around you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd love for you to walk into work tomorrow and people start falling down, foaming at the mouth. <laughs> dial 911. There's a dial 911. You know what's going on. It's okay. You don't need to dial 911. Jesus' name be set free. Because that's, that's all you got to do at that moment in time. You don't have to get all, you know, meditative. You know, you don't have to get all, uh, you know, you don't have to start interceding. You've got authority. They wouldn't have fallen down and started foaming in the mouth if you didn't have authority. Just speak it. In Jesus' name be made whole. It's, you know, I, the, the Lord so laid it upon my heart, School of the Spirit, to do School of the Spirit this past Friday because I had something to deliver. Good, good news is that it's taped. You want to go listen to that. I know many people had many things that they had to get done. They were pressing upon you. I understand that. Praise God. Now you can praise God for you too. To be able to go and and hear what the Holy Spirit is saying about walking over into that, stepping over into that realm which God expects. Father has long patience. He's waiting for something. He's waiting for our response to his, that which he wills to do. There's a precious fruit of the earth that he wants to bring forth. It is the glory of his manifest power seen in the midst of his church seen in the midst of those who have called upon his name and now have allowed all that he has done to be fully realized so that men can see something. You know what they can see? The man God created to exist. Listen, the man that God created to exist was manifested in the man Christ Jesus. That's the man that God, that's the human being that God created to exist. The one that showed forth his glory. The one who brought healing and deliverance to all that were oppressed of the devil. The one that shined with the splendor of God's love and life and virtue and character. 
Psalms 141 says that God is righteous in all of his ways and he is virtuous in all of his works or deeds. I know it says holy in your Bible, but the word that is used there is virtuous. And the kinsmanship word for it in the Greek is the same word that he's called us unto glory and virtue. He's, by his, he's given by us by his divine power all things that pertain to life and godliness so that we might live out, so that we might express and have ruling our appetites and our emotions all that pertain to his glory and virtue. That is a very good life. One of the things that my, I'm passionate about seeing people do is more than just stand in the line and get touched because I've watched people just stand in the line and get touched and never go anywhere with the touch. They just got to come back in the line and get touched. You need to learn how to take a hold of God yourself. That's why sometimes I like to just stop and have people start praying in the Holy Ghost. And I mean, you know, it, it, it needs probably needs to be something that's even done longer, of, you know, when we begin to, 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 to touch that realm. Because what happens is I look around and I see about half the people touch that realm. I see about the other half of the people just aloof. So I say, well, okay, Father, I'll, well, let's just stop, shut down. And we'll go ahead and we'll declare the word so that faith may come that perhaps they may change because it's going to be the word of God that introduces you to change. And then if you believe the word of God, then the Holy Ghost will come upon you and work the miracle. It's the way it's always got to be. It's got to be the word of God going forth. He sends his word and heals. If God sends forth his word and the Holy Ghost but in response to the word creates and brings forth the miracle. You know, if there's anything that you need to begin to do is you need to begin to participate with a culture of touching heaven. And that is going to begin right in the church. Not you just sitting back, hanging out in your little chair. I need to check some of your chairs. My chairs don't have, is not a little cage. It confines me away from the Holy Ghost. But maybe some of you guys' chairs are just there's a problematic chair. Maybe it's a possessed chair. I need to check your chair, see if there's an eject button somewhere. So that you'll begin to move up towards the front. You'll begin to come. You don't just stand back and, and just be willing to be without the move of God. Because you can't tell me it's an expression of the move of God. You can't tell me that Blake lifeless stare is an expression of the move of God. You can't just tell me a, holy, a, a hallelujah and a shake is an expression of the move of God. It's far deeper than that. I don't mind it if it starts that way. I think it'd be better for it to be a hot dog and a shake. It might be more real. God Father wants truth. He's, he, Jesus died at Calvary's cross so that we might be able to come out of the world, come out of the influences of the world come out of the influences of a human existence over into the realm of the divine glory of the only begotten Son. I want you to get the contrast because I don't think you got it. I think you think that God, Jesus Christ, died for us at Calvary so that he could bring us out of the realms of the world over into religion. <laughs> over into some ritual, some knowledge. He did, and he, he died at Calvary's cross, rose again. To bring us over into a consecrated place of living out his life. So that now being consecrated to live out his life, I'm not going to be without it, number one. Number one, Father's not going to allow me to be without it when I'm that sincere about it. When I want the things that come from heaven, I'm not interested in that which is earthly. I'm not interested in the things that I can gain for myself and have for myself. I'm not interested in championing my own ideas. I'm not interested in whether or not people treated me the way I wanted to be treated or they, I felt they needed to treat me about. I'm not interested about what somebody said about me or didn't say about me. That's, that's of no effect upon my life. I'm not living like that. That's the monkey trap. In fact, I say it again. It's living the life of a monkey. It is unbridled passion. 
duty. It's unbridled passions. It's, it's consumed with self-interest. And self-interest is a demonic thing, can be a demonic thing. It's definitely going to be paved the way for demonic things. It's definitely a realm that God demands to be denied. It, it cannot be, as long as it exists, that His glory cannot be made manifest in our life. And I don't believe that any of us have the capacity to do anything about that or to deal with it or recognize it. We have to be immersed in the power and the glory of God. We have to have an encounter with the presence of the Lord and so just want all that He has in order to possibly deal with that because it goes beyond anything that man can do. But if I'm craving, desiring, hungering, wanting only to be in that realm that He exists in, that which He has supplies to me without limitation of His love, of His goodness, of His kindness, of His gentleness, of, of His meekness, of His lowliness, of His peace, of His temperance, of His patience, of His pur purity, of His virtue, of His godliness, of His brotherly love, of His holiness, of His righteousness. That's the things that I desire. That's the things that I want. Number one, He's going to be supplying that to me. He's going to be filling me up. He's got an unlimited supply. I have, a, I have it residing in me now. I have these things residing, the source of it, the fountainhead, the wellspring, the source of the, of not the Nile, but the rivers of God. They got Livingston to go try to find the source of the Nile. And my, it's a big stream by the time it hits Egypt and dumps into the Mediterranean. My, is it big. My, is it deep and fast. Well, I have the fountainhead. God, everyone who's been born of God has the fountainhead of the rivers of God. Who's God himself. Living and dwelling on the inside of us. But it isn't going to mean that we're not going to face situations. That we're going to have to say, no, I'm not going to respond that way. You know, this morning I was making plans for how I could bless those who are my enemy. Who persecute me and speak all manner of evil against me falsely. And it's all for his namesake. It has nothing to do with anything else. They don't like me for what I stand for in Christ Jesus. They don't like me for what I have stated and the position that I have took in the kingdom of God. Whether they want to say it was reckless or whether they wanted to say it was it was extreme or whatever. I'm being persecuted for righteousness sake, for my stand in God. If I were you, I would never do that. I would never do that to anybody by the help and the grace of God. I would never want that judgment coming down on my head. I got enough to be concerned about already. I should have added stuff to me, to my own self. Are you listening to me? Huh? People pointing the finger of accusation. How could we be so arrogant in the first place? How? Could a person born of God ever backslide into such arrogance to point the finger of condemnation? I know not. The Lord came and He redeemed us from the same miserable sin and iniquity, from the same place of darkness and iniquity. He commanded His love towards us while we're trespassed in our trespasses and sin. How could we ever take up such an arrogant attitude as to condemn someone else and by elevating ourselves? <laughs> God in the new nature gave us meekness and lowliness. Tonight, my purpose and my call is I just want the name of Jesus Christ to be glorified. I know His name is going to be glorified in the midst of His people. There needs to be a response of His people of love and compassion and desperation and hunger and thirsting and saying, I want you more than anything else, Lord. And when that's going on in your life, you're going to have it. When that's not going on in your life, you're not going to have it. And, you know, listen there, people. There can be folks that are just like, they. I, I'm, I'm not religious people. They're just religious. Just religious. I mean, they nothing but religious, not filled with the Holy Ghost, they're religious. And they pray, 
and they fast and they shout and they run around and they speak in tongues and they're nothing but religious i've known people like this since i was a little guy my, my i used to have yeah, different times my dad just said that's point out to me said that's just spirit of religion it's just demon power of religion and they just look so good it's just they dance it around just religion And reality of it is, if they would have just stopped for just a moment, they would have recognized they had unforgiveness in the heart. If they would have just, reckon, just stopped, they would have recognized they have things going on in their mind and their affections that have nothing to do with the spirit of the holiness, with God's nature or God's character. They got attitudes and expressions coming out of their mouth that have nothing to do with the kingdom of God or with the Lord Jesus Christ. So they can worship God with one in one situation and curse man with the same mouth in another situation. They could walk around continually with a bad attitude and never recognize. They could walk around depressed and unhappy and disgruntled. And actually deceive themselves and thinking that they right with God. No, let's be conformed to the end. Father's given us all the power and the authority that we need in order to do this. Father wants us to come under the rule of the Holy Ghost. Father wants us to come under the rule of His Word so that all the power that He's given to us in Christ Jesus may be, then begin to have place to flow through our life. It has now course and outlet to the obedience to His Word and obedience to His Spirit. God's glory and power has no means to be released through our life through the actions and activities of self-interest and furthermore, worse than that, some kind of demonic influence. God, God can't be expressed that way. It can only be expressed as we obey His Word. As we walk in the Holy Ghost. As we touch heaven. I don't, tonight God doesn't want anyone walking out of here sick and diseased in your body. He doesn't want that. He wants, you, he wants you to be just willing to take a hold of him and touch the hem of his garment, just knowing within yourself that if you might just touch Jesus. To where, to where you begin to take up what we modeled for you for many years, some of you, of what it looks like when you begin to worship God and you touch heaven and the anointing of the Holy Ghost overwhelms you. And now this prophecy and this glory and this expression of divine grace begins to flow out of you. You can do it. You're going to have to get hooked up. You're going to have to do your homework. You're going to have to serve. You serve God to promote you quickly. To promote you quickly. You don't serve. You run competition. You know, you co-laborers. You're going to get nothing, man. Because it's not that attitude, co-laborer attitude. It's just honored. It's just honored to be able to be here with you, Lord Jesus. To be empowered to serve you and by serving you express your life and do your works wow amazing eh amazing to think and consider tonight that we have this wonderful treasure in these earthen vessels I want you to unlock the treasure it's terrible to have a treasure chest full of all the riches beyond what you could imagine it stays locked up hey there's your treasure chest yeah yeah we got that some time ago well, why do you have a lock on it well we just keep it and make sure nobody can break into it but where is the key well, I don't know where the key is well why don't we go out in your tool shed and get our like get ourselves a sledgehammer and a chisel or maybe a zawzall let's bust into that thing man let's see what you got you know what's in there? No, I've never looked. They I hear tell that there's diamonds that go beyond the wild imagination, the wildest imagination. I heard that there was in there an emerald that was almost big as the chest itself. I heard that it was fine gold. That have, there's no nothing like it on the earth for purity. But we just haven't had time to go get in it. Because we've been busy. 
we get home in the evening and we're tired. And, and we were going to look at it this past Saturday, but something came up. You have a treasure in these earthen vessels. You need to unlock that. You need to begin to participate with it. You need to ha understand how those things are activated, how those things are released. You need to begin to recognize that you have an open door into the sanctuary, the Holy of Holies. That if Father sees you, just begin to say, okay, okay, God, Father, you got my attention now. I know you're there now. I, I, I'm here. Take me a while, but I got it now. I know you're here. Now, I want to spend some time with you, and I want you to begin to show me those things that your heart beats passionately to reveal to me. I want to begin to interact with you now, God, in the dimensions of sonship. I want you to show me. I want you to speak to me right now. I want you to touch me in such a way that I know it's you. And then, I, and then I, I want you to begin to train my passions, my appetites, and my heart, my spirit to be sensitive to you, to respond to you, to begin to talk to Father like that, and something's going to happen. Some of you, you may just, you may just almost find it impossible at the place that you're at with God to have an hour a day to spend with Him. But you can have five minutes or ten minutes because if you get really passionate, if it's not religious, but it's, it's all really truly about touching Him and saying, look, you know, because we talked, I've been talking to you a couple of weeks about fed, I'm fed up to here with me. And everybody said that, but I don't know. Uh, I think maybe people forgot on Monday. And you went back to you. Because you didn't know anyplace else. That's where you get your money. It's where you get your food. It's where you get your gas. Huh? That's where, where you, you know, where you get your stuff. You. What would you do without you? Who would take care of you if you don't take care of yourself? God. The Lord, He would. So you can start with five minutes, ten minutes. How many of you commute? You're in your car. You drive. You drive to work. That's for many people. That's going to be more than ten minutes. Don't stare out the window. Pray in the Holy Ghost till you touch heaven. Pray in the Holy Ghost till you touch heaven. Maybe start off with you pray in the Holy Ghost and you got really nothing but you the whole trip. Do it the next day. Do it the next day. Do it the next day because it's not going to be long. In your car, you don't have to pull over the side. Because encounters with God takes a little bit to get used to. And then you, you stay in that and then there's another encounter with God. And it takes a little bit to time to get used to. You need a little time to adjust because you can't talk. And then there's, and then it doesn't stop. It just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. And it doesn't stop. And we go from glory to glory. We go from an encounter to an encounter. We keep maturing in the things. The Spirit, Father, enlarges our heart with a greater capacity to receive more because we are received more. Our, all of our last names should be received more. The church are the received more. So I know what Father wants. He wants the precious fruit of the earth. I know what the precious fruit of the earth that James is talking about in James chapter 5. I know what that is. That's the glorious manifested power of Jesus Christ revealed in you and me. The earth groans. Paul said in Romans chapter 8 that the earth groans and travails even until now waiting for the adoption to make a manifestation or rather really for the sonship to manifest in our lives as the sons of God, as full sonship. 
to see the redemption that we have received from Christ Jesus. I mean, I said it wrong. To see the redemption that we have received in Christ Jesus result in the manifested sons, sonship, authority that has been given to us. As many as believed, he gave them the authority to be the sons of God. Everyone who would receive. Everyone who would receive. Huh. Oh, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now. Right now. And because as these sons, we're not just any kind of sons, we're, those that, we're the sons that are going to see him as he is, for we shall be like him. Thus, we live these consecrated lives because we have this hope we purify ourselves even as he is pure. We don't want anything to do with any of the any of the stuff that would grieve the Holy Ghost or be contrary to the image and the nature of the Lord Jesus. We give ourselves to be conformed to the image of the Son. And we recognize that Jesus Christ is the express image of the person of the Father who now upholds all things with the word of his power and that he is, his redemption was so focused on our lives personally that he said, I'm going to come and live in you and walk in you. I'm going to come and dwell on the inside of you. My Father is going to come with you. I'm going to manif come with me. I'm going to manifest myself to you. His whole delight is being revealed in the midst of his people. And then more than that, his heart's delight is to be manifested in all the fullness of his power through the midst of his church. Well, that, that understanding and that reality is going to somehow, there's got to be something that God's going to do to, to, and I've heard several men of God say you don't have to do nothing. So I kind of stumble at this. But it's like I think, well, Father, you're going to have to do something to change the order of things because nobody's getting this. Or very few people are getting this. So how are you going to have a glorious church that you've described in your word? I'm not talking about the glorious church or a church definition that you have from some denomination. I'm talking about what God described in his word. I'm talking about that display of his power, that display of his person. I'm talking about a, dis a dimension of his church that's actually even greater in its effect and blessing than what was on Israel as a nation. Because the Lord said, I'm going to take the kingdom of God from you, Israel, as a nation, and I'm going to give it to another nation that brings forth the fruits of it. And he's talking to his church as a holy nation, a, high, a treasured people, a royal priesthood. You got too many identities. You got too many job descriptions. You got too many other interests. We have too many other things going on. We're going to have to, we're going to have to be willing to respond to the call of God to be consecrated unto Him, to belong wholly unto Him, to be set apart. Yes, He is our sanctification, as much as He is our righteousness. But that means that we live and dwell in Him, and that means that we come under His authority. We come under His rule. We come under His reign then that practically works out into, a re into the realm that we participate with his word and we do what he said. And he told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And you better do it. Well, oh Lord, I didn't go into all the world and preach the gospel because I, I had my job. I didn't go into all the world and preach the gospel because of my children, because I have a family. I didn't go into all the world and preach the gospel because we left that for the pastor to do. He's going to say, did you notice that that says what it says in the Word? Go into all the world and preach the gospel unless your pastor is doing it. Go into all the world and preach the gospel unless you have a job. Go into all the world and preach the gospel unless you're busy raising your children. Did you notice all of that that we added into it? See, you don't want to add to the Word of God because these plagues will be added. 
the plagues of this book would be added to you. So you know that if you don't add, you won't have the plagues. Hallelujah. That's a catching away. That's another proof, one of the many proofs that we're going to be caught away. One of many. Huh? Hallelujah. And don't take away because your name would be taken out of the Lamb's Book of Life. That helps everybody that believes once you're saved, they're always saved. Your, ne your name could never be taken out. The Lord said take it out. He'll take it out. So argue with God. Huh? So, I mean, we could go on like that all night. I'm not going to. My point is, when you add to the Word of God, you open yourself up for deception. Because you added to it. Go into all the world and preach the gospel unless your pastor's going. The only reason we have you give into missions is so that the miracle of finances and faith will be multiplied unto you again so that you can go too. You can have fruit that abounds. They can have fruit that abounds to your account and having now been hooked up with what God's doing through their life, you can do it as well. Just that much more boldly. God tells us all of these things that he wants us to do all of these days. He says, I want you to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Well, I mean, you've got to say from a practical point of view, what kind of passion is that? What kind of passion is it look like to hunger? Does this look like hunger? Does those kind of expressions look like hunger? No, hunger is one of the most intense passions known to man. We just need to get you hungry. We don't want you sitting around with your stomach growling necessarily, but we want to get you spiritually hungry. Because when you get spirit, when you get hungry and the food is set, you run it. Look, I, what a, I, can I come to the front of the line? I haven't eaten for days. Can I please? And then thirst is even that much more of a passion display of man's cravings. Cravings. You'd be cutting in line. You'd be jumping over top of each other to get to the water. Huh? If you really thirsty? Huh? You think you walk in an orderly fashion? No, you wouldn't. No, not after you've been hungry long enough and thirsty long enough, but we'll find out just how much of love of self there is. Huh? It's easy to speculate what you would do now that you're sitting here having <laughs> eaten supper already and drank yourself pretty much to a place that, you know, my wife stuffed us with food. It's all her fault. I have to run an extra mile tomorrow now. So that my body will work right. So do you. Maybe you don't know it. Maybe you just put it off till later. Ah, uh, well, we're going to die anyway. That's a terrible state of mind and being. I'm actually not planning on dying. I'm planning on being caught away. I'm planning on being, I'm planning on standing in the midst of one of the most glorious revivals. I'm talking about seeing the lost come by the tens of thousands, the hundreds of thousands. Hallelujah. Breaking the bread seeing it multiplied, all the miracles of Jesus and more, and then right in the midst of that, pfft, caught away. That's, he's coming for a glorious church. It has no spot, no wrinkle. I mean, it's everything that he purposed it to be with all of the splendor and beauty therewith. I was telling some preachers the other day, I said, yeah, you know, I practice translation because I want to be translated into, um, into Saudi Arabia, into Mecca and some other places. And they're looking at me like, you practice translation? How do you do that? And really, I was saying it for an effect. I wanted to impact them 
on the fact that if they're going to go everywhere or anywhere and do signs and wonders and miracles, they better know how to go over into the realms of the anointing in a deeper way. I'm telling you that right now. I'm telling you. I know how deep you can go. I can watch your response to the anointing. I know how deep you can go. And Father wants you to go a whole lot deeper. He doesn't want you to be shallow. He wants you to be able to fully respond to his moving. And you can't be offline and fully respond. You can't be stuffing yourself with a bunch of natural things and not end up with spiritual digestion, hardening of the heart and arteries, spiritually. Being offline with God, being impacted by trying to please men. Do you know that that is a spiritual dis dimension that will absolutely shut you off from the anointing? Where you're impacted by men's attitudes and the cultural, you respond to cultural needs. You get around people that you relate to intellectually or, you know, culturally. Maybe it's, you know, they're this kind of folks or that kind of folks. You know, they're the yuppies or the hippies or the, you know, the richies or the preppies and whatever, you know. You respond to whatever they are. You accommodate that atmosphere. It literally imprisons you. You can't be. you another person. They impose upon you an environment. They impose upon you a realm. They impose upon you a mind. They impose upon you a state of being. You're cut off from God. Cut off from the anointing. And that becomes a stronghold in people's lives. Now they're going to try to fit into the glory of God where man doesn't exist. Where it's about lowliness and meekness. They're going to try to now be sensitive to the anointing that operates in an entirely different realm. God calls you and me to be consecrated, set apart into a realm where only He influences us so that we can become very sensitive to Him. So that we can respond to Him. So that we can benefit from the full effects and impact of that which He supplies. People, there, it, it's, it's not an option it's essential it's essential i've heard every man of god that i know that has ever stepped into any anointing and every book i've ever read of any man who ever stepped into anointing all the way into the depths of the bible declare that the anointing of the manifest presence of god to you and through you is in direct proportion to your willingness to be consecrated to god and that's not a religious consecration. We don't have a TV. You need to get one. Because your consecration is all wrapped up in the wrong thing. We're talking about a consecration to his presence. To interacting with his manifest presence. Not to some religious form not to some religious outward ritual what you wear or don't wear how you fashion your hair or whether you wear a hat or don't wear a hat or whether you watch tv or go to the movies or whatever or beach or whatever or live in a cave all of this nonsense is religious father's not interested in it he changed your heart he brings you into a place of relationship with him where, in, in, where you find yourself in his manifest presence. Then he teaches you and shows you and convinces you and convicts you. Don't do that. You, you can do that. That's okay. He grieves you. He, you're grieved. You grieved with his grieving as soon as you're doing something that is not right. And you can override that. The other day I was overriding it for about a minute. We were, we were in a situation and there was something... It was on the television. I was watching it a little bit too long. I was grieved by it. About a minute or two went by, and I sat there, and I said to myself, how long will you abide this when you've been grieved? You know, once again, being reminded that I can override God's Holy Ghost inspiration. I don't want to override it, because if I override it, I've hardened myself against Him. And we know that in the last days, the love of many shall wax cold because of iniquity, iniquity abounding. Not necessarily that you are in the iniquity, but it's an atmosphere of iniquity where sin is condoned in every area and every dimension of your life. Huh? And we in that day. We're in that realm. 
And then ultimately what we find is the heart is hardened because of the deceitfulness of sin. Because why does, why, why does 1 Corinthians chapter 3, why does Paul say the deceitfulness of sin? Because it's something that you begin to allow and justify. It's deceitful. If you were in his presence, and only in his presence, you would know what it is. But from a legalistic point of view, or from a mental point of view, or from an intellectual point of view, you don't really, you can't really see it as sin. You justify it. Jealousy. Envy. Malice. Evil speaking. Evil ideas. That primarily are focused against relationship, more than anything else, against relationship. truth murmuring complaining and not, not even necessarily adultery not even necessarily fornication any kind of pornea which is evil is the word is the word for evil it also can be used the word for, it's primarily translated evil the whole scope of things and evil really big that and they you should be everybody should be upset because of what's going on with the acceptance of homosexuality, which you should be just upset with what's going on with the acceptance of alcoholism, adultery, fornication, abortion. It's all the same category. People be up in arms with it for a little while, and then they get over it. I was just in a town that you're not even... It, up until just this last year, you couldn't buy alcohol in their county. And a few years back, you couldn't buy tobacco. And still, now that they've allowed alcohol in their county, you're not allowed to drink alcohol on Sundays till after church is over. And our whole nation used to be like that. But now you can't even imagine. Now, everybody say, ah, they're oppressing us. Ah, ah. Well, I can understand that. Because you have no desire, nor want to, nor ability to even comprehend why there would be any such attitude if you're not in the presence of the Lord. And it's just all law and legalism anyways. And people are going to drive the next county, get drunk, and come, by, come back home and kill somebody. You know what I'm saying? So you can't justify that. I mean, I go on and on with these kinds of things. Where we were, our state, and all we want to go back to this, I want to go to heaven. I don't want to go back. I want to go forward. I don't see too much back there except for Jesus that I don't want to go back to anyways. And he's not back there. He's up here. He's right here right now. In fact, the future is more important to God than the past and something that's even more important to God than the future. And that is the right here and now, right now, right this moment, at this time. Because tonight, whether you know it or not, you are making decisions that will impact your tomorrow. And you sit there and you act like your response now has little consequence. That you can just let this pass through one ear and out the other. You can take the choice of whether you agree or disagree. But I'm going to tell you right now, you better think about it again. Because it's going to have an impact on the rest of your existence. There are no decisions that you make that does not have major consequence. You just want to be hungry. You want to be thirsty. You want to get it right. And the Word of God is being spoken. You want to say, I want that. I'll take a hold of that. Father, change me now. I'm not being like I was before. You can't get up and walk out of the meeting when, God, when God's being addressed. That's evil. It's rude. Well, I need to go to the bathroom. You need prayer. I'm going to, I'll shake it down to where you're living. You can't have a bad attitude over correction. Because it's high-mindedness, it's arrogance, it's haughtiness, it's rebellion, it's stubbornness. It will keep you from heaven. Stubbornness and rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. And I say that witchcraft is, is as bad as homosexuality. So you can be all up in arms about homosexuality, but who wants your witchcraft? Who wants your stubbornness? Who wants your rebellion? Think about it. I'm talking to everybody in this place. I'm not talking to just one. I'm talking to everybody. I'm not talking just to you. I'm talking about everybody. Because there's not a single person that doesn't run a risk of being stubborn and rebellious. And there's not a single person in this place, if you should encounter God just a little bit more, that you will collapse and say, God, how could have I been so stubborn and arrogant? 
How could I have been so self-exalted and, and high-minded? How could it is, oh God, that I have such little humility in my life when that is the very character and nature that you gave me when I was born of the Spirit? I have just totally abandoned the way. Because I took up false models and took up wrong attitudes and resisted the Word of God because I didn't agree, because I didn't understand. God told you to be converted, become like a little child. He didn't tell you to understand. He didn't tell you. God's not interested in whether you agree with Him with respect to your opinion. He's, he's interested in you and agreeing with Him because you're willing to submit and conform and recognize that He knows more than you know, than we know. He places before us the privilege of access into His presence with only acceptance and love and glad to have us there. He blesses us with the privilege and divine ability and grace to run off every power of darkness that would try to stop us and hinder us and ill affect us. And we can just take this for granted and act like we can make up our own mind and decide for ourselves what we will do and what we will not do. You will never have the functioning mind of Christ with such a disposition. You will come into a place of consecrating yourself, of humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God, of obeying His Word and becoming like a little child and becoming a yes man to God and so passive in your nature towards Him. As long as you self-will, as long as you know what's best for you and all you know and understand God as much and as better as anyone else because after all, we need not that any man teach us. Misapplied Scripture. What God teaches us by the anointing that we don't need anybody to teach us is that we're supposed to abide in Him. And when you abide in Him, that is extreme humility and lowliness and brokenness and servitude and submission and obedience and cooperation and no backbiting and no finger pointing and no holding on to your own life and unwilling to cooperate with the church because you don't agree. I want, you to, I want you to become an intercessor that breaks the stronghold of that power and dominion that rules throughout the churches throughout the United States of America. And if you're not careful, you'll come under the same influence of the same demonic power and try, it will try to work its work through you in this place and it won't work. Because Satan can't touch me. And I hate everything about him with a righteous hatred. In any display of his power or his nature through human beings is a disgust and a reproach to the glory of the Father, and it will be rebuked, not tolerated. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. I will reprove them, and so thus I will suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, because I will obey God and not tolerate that kind of mess and belligerence against the Word of God. Not in my life, not in my house, not in his church, not among his preachers or his pastors and everyone that Father has given me an influence in their lives because that's the place he set me. Where has he set you? Father set you in a place right where you're at right now. How are you doing? How well are you responding to being conformed to his image? How well are you responding to the nature and virtue of the Holy Spirit to be like He is, to fully fulfill the role and responsibility that you have right where you're at right now? Because that's what's important now. Once again, the future is more important than the past. Don't live in the past. You can't go back and change that. The future, you still can decide. The future is not yet written for you. You've got a decision to make. But what's more important in the future is the now, right here, right at this moment. Because the things that you're deciding, the way that you're responding to the anointing, the way you're interfacing with God right now, will have tremendous impacts on tomorrow. You can't afford a bad attitude. You can't afford a day of doubt and unbelief. You can't afford a, doing it the way you think. Humble yourself. Think you know you get in a situation, emotional button gets hooked, and boy, does it 
You know, it's the 4th of July in your thoughts, ain't it? Your mind just popping off with all kinds of explosive ideas and imaginations, every matrix and parameter you can come up with about what you're going to do and how you're going to act. Well, you need to learn how to just shut that down. How do you shut that down? You enter into the present. You begin to worship him and say, Lord, I don't care about it. I give it all to you. It doesn't matter to me. All I want's heaven. Father, all I want to do is be right with you, Holy Spirit. All I want to do is yield to you. I don't care about this. I don't care about money. I don't care about people's opinion. I don't care whether or not anybody likes me. Jesus, <laughs> they hated you. And they said that you were a devil. Huh? I mean, I'm kind of jealous of Ruth Anna. I've never been bitten for Jesus' sake. Stephen was bitten for Jesus' sake. I've never been bitten. I want to be bitten. <laughs> I've been slapped. I've been punched. I've been actually bitten spiritually. I've probably been chewed up. <laughs> I've been eaten for breakfast, lunch, and supper. One time the Lord let me hear just for a moment all of the accusations that were being spoken against me at once. And it was like, whoa, man, that's got, it was just very loud. Everybody's talking. <laughs> Jesus. That's what you got to look forward to in God. <laughs> Jesus said the world hated me. It's going to hate you. Huh? They, if they said I do what I do by a devil, what are they going to say about you? But I tell you, every second in him is worth it. To just be a part of the glorious church. I don't care what anybody says about me. I said this to the Lord all the time. Father, I don't care what anybody says about me. I don't care how people feel about me. I don't care, Lord, how many this or that things there are. All I want is your glory and your power manifested through my life with signs and wonders and miracles, a demonstration of that which you place within the midst of the church through my life, to my life, first and foremost, and through my life. Now, I can say that, but then tomorrow comes, and I can tell you, I know when it's 7.01. I don't have to look at the clock. I know it's 7.01. I'm one minute past my time of prayer, and it hits me real hard. I can say, it's 7.01 right now, isn't it? Why? Because he's calling me. It's not, it's not a ritual. It's not legalistic. What am I going to do? Oh, I've got, got a yoke of oxen. Got a new field. Well, I thought well, that may be just something you said once. No. Something you would say potentially continually. He's calling. What kind of effect does it have on you to think that Almighty God has singled you out and is calling you, saying, hey, Come talk with me. I want to talk with you. Eh? Think about it. What happens if that becomes no longer abstract but tangible and real to you? Changes a whole lot, doesn't it? All the legal stuff goes. All the have to, don't have time to, no longer enters your mind. Now you entered into a relationship. Now you're in a holy communion. Now something real's going down. Now you've just advanced from babyhood to having your eyes open. You're not blind anymore. You can see. You're not spiritually blind. You're not spiritually unaware of your environment. Like a little child. Father's, did you know that if you didn't know this tonight, now you know it. Father singled you out. And he's called you to come be with him. And as soon as you get close to him, he's going to say, hey, uh, you can't have that. Uh, that had to, uh, no, no, I want you to get rid of that. No, come on in, come on in, come on in. Hey, now, it's all just a heart-to-heart -heart communion, you know. You know. But Father, you heard what they said about me. You heard, you heard. And I was standing for you, and I executed your judgment. And I declared this on your behalf. And look, I said, leave that out. 
Come over here. Then I make my decision consciously whether I want to hang on to my problem, my issue, my attitude, or come over and spend some time with Father because I've been invited into this. I've been invited. And the more I go there, the more I realize that I'm really there. And the more time I spend there, it becomes a holy communion. And I become so enriched. I become so strengthened. I become so filled up that the things of this world grow strangely dim. That those things that used to have real value and real meaning to me that were really important, the things that I needed to achieve, the things I needed to attain, no, no longer has any value. All that matters is the heavenly realm. All that matters is going and conquering India. I, today, a, a, a new part of India was born in my spirit. Huh? It was. Because I'm standing there and I'm looking at, what was there, seven people? And they're all from the same region of India. They're from the same little province in southern India. I said, you, so you all guys, you all of you came here together? No, you all came individually. Did you know each other before you came? No. I said, do you think that maybe your province is a little bit more overrepresented here in San Diego? No. How did you come here to the church? You know, I'm working on this thing, man, because I know this, this is just, you know, this is no coincidence. They're all from the same region, and they're saying they need the fire of God. They want the fire of God, and I'm going. What's the name of that province? Kerala, right? Kerala? Huh? Hey? Say it again. Kerala. Say it right. That's what I want to hear it from the Hindi. Kerala. I called up one of my friends and said, well, Carol is on the radar now. Get some more money. Or whatever we need to do, pull it together. I'm going to Carol to a bunch of places I can't even pronounce the name. They're like 20 syllables. I kid you not. It's just like, it's just, it's the name of a city that's like this long. Just, there's no end to what God will do with your life if you just let him uh, if you just let him begin in another dimension move past all of the stuff that you have up to this point and step into a whole nother realm I, I praise God for whatever's happened to you up to this point just it, you're done it, that's over now. now time to come into a new phase in God Now to, it's now time to mature and recognize that he truly has singled you out and he's calling you to himself. I, I want to talk to you. Well, so if the Lord was up in the office right now and I came to you and I said, you're not going to believe this. Man. The Father wants to see you right now in the office. He wants to talk with you. Spend some time with you. No worries, you're not in trouble. He's got some... <laughs> He's got some things he wants to show you and tell you important to him. He singles you out for a special mission, for a special work. You'll never know this. You'll never know this until you spend time with him. And I'm not talking about religiously. I'm not, listen, I'm not, listen. Come on now. I know where people, some people's thoughts go here. I'm talking about forget about what you've experienced. I'm talking about something far more. Since I'm talking about something far more. I'm talking about something that'll keep you from falling. I'm talking about something that'll burn in your heart for the rest of your life. It won't fade away. Are you listening? I'm, talk, I'm telling you, Father's calling you, singing you out to come into a new phase with Him. If you say, well, I can't come because of my condition and my situation. I can't come because of my job I can't come because of my husband or my wife I can't come because of my kids I can't come because of this or that nonsense it's all lies it's excuses he's calling you to come so to come be with him in a place that there he has show you who he is reveal himself to you and make known 
to you the things that he's purposed to do this season to you. And it will never take place until all of a sudden spending time with him is more important to you than you doing whatever it is you think is good to do and important to do and whatever it is, you know. The way your value system works. Our time is managed by each one of us based upon our value system, based upon what's important to us because we love ourselves so much. But love is never expressed in self-interest. Love is only expressed in giving. Love can only be expressed through giving. And the most important kind of love that needs to be expressed is our love expressed towards the Father. And He's put the love on the side of us so that we may give to Him as He's given to us. And in that exchange, we'll begin to give to others. It's going to be a beautiful church. It's going to be beautiful. Right now, in Jesus' name, God the Holy Ghost frees you from everything of the past. God the Holy Ghost frees you by the blood of Jesus Christ from every sin of your lip, from every deceit of your heart, from every complaint of your mouth. Now all you have to do is repent. Now all you have to do is to, and that repentance simply is a consecration to the Lord an announcement to yourself that you're not going to allow that anymore. And that by His help and by His strength, you're going to rather do those things which He said to do. Ha! Ah. Hallelujah. You're going to take all of your emotions and all of your passions and all of your feelings and you're going to submit, it, submit them to Him and say, Holy Ghost, I lay these before you. I give them to you. They belong to you. I offer them to you as an offering. Now, whatever you want to inspire me with and whatever you want to do through me, that's all I'm going to do. The rest I'm going to deny and reject. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there's not going to be sickness and disease dominating over anyone's life in this place. I break the power of every affliction and every torment. Mentally and physically. In the name of Jesus. Father, we as a church tonight, we consecrate ourselves to you. To step over into a realm of of hearing what you have to say and participating with the things that you purposed us to do. That the greatest work that you've ever purposed and planned to do may begin to be seen, not only in other places, but in this place as well. Father, that in this place, there is a, a, a company of people with a submitted and willing heart that's yielded to you to do it your, your way. To move with you from the state. To no longer move with the things of this world. To move with the influences of men. Circumstances. And demon power. But to be consecrated to only move in you and by you and with you. I want everybody to stand with me. I, I want you to just... I want you to just come forward, just come, come get, come get around, come get around, come get around, just begin to touch heaven, come get around, just begin to touch heaven, let God establish this as a culture in your life, a way of living. Oh, 
Father, we thank you that you called us into yourself. Father, we come to you right now. We yield ourselves to you, Father. Let your glory sweep Your glory sweep our lives. Oh, Father, we thank you for the blood that cleanses. We thank you for the blood that washes away every sin. We thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that explodes in our lives. Lord, may there never be any unholy, unrighteous thing from this day forward standing within the context of our relationship with you. Lord, come make known yourself. Come manifest your glory. Jesus, Jesus. Everybody, just join hands. Just join hands. Just keep praying. Just join hands. Just join hands. Begin the bottle Saturday. Just keep praying. Let that basta. Let the glory. Let the glory of heaven. Let the glory of heaven. Let the glory of heaven. Let the glory of heaven sweep upon your soul. Let the glory of heaven overwhelm everything about your life tonight in Jesus' name. You will, oh God, you will, oh God, you will, oh God, you will, oh God, your glory, your glory, your glory, your work of power, your work of faith, oh God, your great outpourings, we pray in Jesus' name. Every sickness, every sickness and every disease,
I want you to I want you to say with me say Holy Spirit I want you to say with me say Holy Spirit I yield myself to you Holy Spirit Take full control of me. Holy Spirit, reveal to me everything I need to lay aside. So that you can take full control of me. Father, we thank you for the change that you bring into our lives. The ability to do those things that you've asked us to do. We thank you for strengthening us with your mighty power. By your spirit in our inner being right now. That nothing about our future is going to look anything like our past. Thank you, Jesus. Because from this day forward, we live our lives consecrated to you like never before to allow nothing except for those things that belong to heaven in our lives. To give ourselves over to the holy emotions. To give ourselves over to the purity and to the virtue that you've called us to live in. To give ourselves over to your love and your compassion and your joy and your peace and your humility and your brokenness and your tenderness. Father, we thank you that you take our lives tonight and you so fill us up with your good goodness and of your grace that we go every place laying hands on the sick, casting out devils, just following you just by nature, naturally living in the realms of divine power and glory. Father, I thank you that at this very moment, every pain and every sickness and every disease and every wrong thing that would try to work against any person's spirit or soul or body is broken right now. Healed. Healed right now in Jesus' name. Healed right now in Jesus' name. Ha <laughs> Oh God, we seek your face, oh God, we seek your presence. What, what, we're, what we petition you to do by the ability that Father gives us, <laughs> what we petition you to do by the Spirit of the Lord is to find a place every day where you can touch heaven heaven touches you we begin to pray until some dimension of heaven begins to touch you and then 
you know, in that thanksgiving, in that praise. Watch as Father begins to take that manifestation of His presence and of His glory and cause it to become bigger and bigger and more intense in your life. We want you to take that personal relationship with the Lord and bring it into the context of being right here. Because I'm telling you, Father has purposed that a rushing mighty wind fill this place. Father has purpose that not just one or two or not just a few become overwhelmed by the glory in the context of a meeting, but everyone comes under the grip of His divine presence. And if you will begin to seek Him with me in a way that He's called us to, so that His life, His compassion, His mercy could be showed forth through our lives the way it was shown in His life. I, I promise you that there will be an explosion of the divine power of God in the United States of America. And it might as well, fire might as well be lit right here. You know, I, I recently became part of Pat Schott's line board. I, you know, I'm on several different ministries boards, and I just thought I would share this with you because of what's going on with Pat. He sent me a video clip last night, and there, there must have been at least two, maybe 5,000. I'm just going to say two. A huge, massive crowd of youth just crying out to God in the most beautiful way. And I mean, this is just happening everywhere. So I'm just, I'm, you know, when he asked me, he said, would you please be on my board? And, you know, the Lord just so connected me with him. And, and we could only be on so many people's boards. And, but I just felt like, you know, I said, I'll, you know, just give me some time. I was waiting on the Lord. And I was standing here Sunday morning, and the Lord told me to. And then so I called him up that the following Tuesday, just some time ago. said I would be. But he's going to come in June. And we're, you know, we have been to him. A, a, a time, an opportunity to connect with his ministry and to focus faith on seeing a, an event take place here in the city. He believes that the Lord showed him that there's something so unique about what Father's purpose to do in Southern California, specifically San Diego. And I personally am hooked up with that. That doesn't sound like a fairy tale to me. And it doesn't sound like this, well, that's another statement that somebody's making that's real positive. No, I believe that. You know, the seven people that we prayed for today from India, that was a result of people going out and handing out invitations. You know, it seems like you go hand out invitations and it's like, you know, there's hardly anybody interested. Listen, I'm going tell you right now, you're sowing seed. You're sowing the seed. Believe me, it's something as simple as you're being willing to go in faith and begin to hand out invitations. They're all going back to India within a year. And to be able to be a part of their life, I told them today, I said, you didn't come here to get your MBA in, in, in clinical and, uh, and, 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 and diagnostic, you know, clinical diagnostic business. You came, they all basically graduated. I think at UCSD's business school. Someplace like that. Here in the city. I said, you came here to get touched here in this church for here and the whole reason you came. I mean basically there was the, they didn't they've been here for quite some time didn't know that a church like this existed. They said, yeah we're here. And it's because that you, many of you were willing to go out and begin to look for one in a thousand that they even even they were even able to come. The Lord's gonna do that. I mean it looks like you know we you know we come we can easily weary in well doing because it doesn't seem like we're getting the results. Don't let up. See, we're up against strongholds. We're up against re fortified religious forces. And the only thing that's going to make the difference is the manifest presence and power of God in our life. Not our intellectualism. Not who we are. God help us. Not what we can do. 
Because I'm telling you right now, if you and I would be willing to come into a place in submission to the Holy Spirit to where you can't even see you anymore, I don't even recognize you. Like, who are you? Oh, yeah, that's right, you're David Graham. Didn't even recognize you, man. All I could see is Jesus. All I could see was the power and the glory of God at work in your life. That's what changes everything. That's the dynamic that changes everything. We can hook up with the Father in relationship with Him, the opportunity that we've been given, because I'm telling you, He's singled you out, and He's asked you to come spend some time with Him. Just do it. Don't be all frustrated. Don't be all anxious. Don't be all overwhelmed. Just do it. Just forget about it. Just cast all the cares away. Forget about all the other stuff. What's what Father will do? And then bring that here. And let's just have, you know, there's going to be times where the Lord's going to lay on my heart to do things like call for those who are, are lost to come. There'll be those who are lost and they'll come. Or the sick, the disease, or whatever else. And, and so we'll come and we'll focus on them. But don't let it be too long. And, and then you start gathering in around it. You start gathering in around, around up here on this pla in this place in the context of the fellowship and the relationship that you have with God and where every time you come here, it's about you touching heaven. It's about you being filled, about you standing right here in this place and as we're praying for each other and as we're laying hands, just, hold, just, just even just joining hands with people around you. Then the Spirit of the Lord begins to lay things upon your heart to do. And you just do it. I guarantee you, you'll find yourself closing your eyes, closing your eyes and getting a vision, an open vision seeing a face and seeing then maybe an object sometimes like today you know i laid hands on someone and as soon as i laid hands on them i said a very colorful guitar lit up and i said to them do you do you play an instrument no well you're going to get ready and i tell you what that instrument is the guitar grab the whole thing grab a hold of the thing because the anointing of the holy ghost is on it you'll explode in the thing and right now in jesus name we see and it's in the house Word of knowledge is in the house. Prophecy is in the house. The giftings of the Spirit are here. You get to operate in those things. You get to receive those things. To immediately go out and just by nature, you don't have to try to put it on. It's just by nat nature. You just let God direct you. And God will show you people. It, 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 won't be a, it, won't, it won't be a have to. You won't be forced to do it. It'll be a tractor beam. You'll be just drawn into it. And you'll go, and when you begin to approach them, it'll be such an anointing of boldness and confidence on you because you'll be God sent and be God ordained. Look at Listen, imagine, I just, I'm going to go over some of the things that went over Friday night real quickly. Please watch Friday night. The Lord had me to deliver something on Friday night. I know a lot of people weren't able to come. I'm sure there's a bit of confusion about what meeting was going on as well. But nonetheless, re just please spend some time with it because I delivered something about walking in this wonderful divine realm by nature, just naturally, knowing that God's going to show you. Because if you were walking, you know, let's just say you had a lunch break and it was 30 minutes and you're walking down the street. If you tried to talk to every single person, you'd never get to lunch and you wouldn't get back to, to the job. And if, but however, if you're willing to be over in this realm of divine power and grace, then you're going to be walking down the street and the Lord's going to all of a sudden lay upon your heart the right person. You may walk down that sidewalk three, four, five times and nothing happens. Just leave it to the Lord. Let begin to come under His divine control and His compulsion rather than a necessity or a have to. Let God the Holy Ghost, because He knows the right one that's ready. You can be so busy out of obligation getting everybody that you don't have time to get to the one that was ready. Let God, you know, you know, and I tell you, it'll be fun. It won't be like you know, scary or, you know, intimidating or, or awkward. You'll have a download from heaven. Compassion will consume you. They will not be a stranger to you, even though they were, are a stranger. You will have a divine power and authority to minister to them, and that will be effective ministry. When we begin to give ourselves over to this relationship with the Holy Spirit, here's what takes place. What takes place is we begin to, by nature, find ourselves following Jesus in power to do His ministry, and within that context, all the gifts of the Spirit are available to us whatever we need, anytime we need them. If we try to force it, if we try to make it happen, if we've got to do it because that's the mandate that's placed upon us, then God by the Ghost doesn't even really have much of a time really to get in there. I'm not saying He can't use the Baptist method of handing a tract to everybody on the street. I'm not saying that. I'm saying right now, there is a great need for you and I 
begin, begin to just kind of, as it were, stand back and say, okay, Holy Spirit, I want to come under your divine direction specifically to do your work in the most effective way. And as you spend time with them, you're going to become very sensitive to that. Hallelujah. And it is a glorious thing. I love ministering to people under the direct inspiration and fire of the Holy Ghost. Every time it's effective. Hallelujah. Every, and and, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to say this again. Every appointment is a divine appointment. Everybody that comes across your way, the Father puts in front of you. It's an opportunity to minister to them at some degree in some way, to show them some kind of love, some kind of compassion, some kind of kindness. So today was a great day to just tell everybody, hey, happy Resurrection Sunday. What a glorious day. Pray that you've been being touched and impacted by the full dimensions of what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago. And who can stop it? Because it's a holiday. I mean, I had one person say, back at you. It's just all they could say. They're completely like, back at you. It's okay. They got the gospel. No matter what, huh? You say, well, then you can say, well, Mom, I need more anointing on. Well, maybe. That's true. I do. We do. And we want that. God's word doesn't return void. And there's a lot of hard hearts and there's a lot of people running from God. The Father's going to make us effective. I just feel, I feel a little brokenness in God's Holy Ghost grabbing a hold of us. I feel a brokenness coming. I'm telling you right now. I feel a brokenness of the Spirit. Just bent before His presence. Just longing for more. Just no longer willing to run wide open with self-interest, but just broken before him, just here sitting at his feet. Hallelujah. Thank you. to say this and we say Lord I'm going to let your glory shine and I'm going to let your rivers flow <laughs> amen because he's already purposed that he's already given that now it's up to us to be cool. find a bunch of people around you hug them tell them that you love them bless them in Jesus name dear people let me say this too as you're doing this I mean, we, God, God has just used all of you in an amazing way. We were able to bless back to Jerusalem with almost, I think, about $10,000. I think we did the same with, with Overland Missions. And I, and I, you know, the Lord has promised to multiply that again to you. So you stand in faith about it. And do not forsake continuing to give your tithes and your offering. Because, look, we're just going to have to press in. You had to press in for the, the miracles that Father has for us. You do what you do what God's given you the ability to do and the faith to do, and He's gonna take care of the rest and multiply that in your life. If there's anyone in here you've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of the heavenly language and you want to be be here for that I guarantee you we'll put some people on you right now the power of God to come on you and you'll just be launched out into glory land thank you Jesus
And in the mighty name of Jesus, to declare the power of his wonderful works, so Jesus Christ, the baptizer, may baptize people in the Holy Ghost to do everything that he's purposed to do as he goes alongside them. So according to that which God ordained and which Father has set in place, we recognize also that ordination and that election. And so set you in place along with us, hallelujah, we standing with you, you never alone, but you are encamped about by so great a cloud of witnesses, both in heaven and here on earth, in the midst of this company of people, to do the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. burn from sea to shining sea. Lord, let the glory of your salvation overcome all humanity. Oh God, we pray in Jesus' name. Let the divine power be an explosion throughout the earth that every eye will see the wonderful works of Jesus who died at Calvary, purchased us with his blood set us apart for heaven and for eternity. Raise up, oh God, we pray, these revivalists of these last days. Those, oh Lord, who do your works and greater works than these, who will not back down, but will speak with the spirit of liberty, holding forth the word of life as you work with them, confirming your word. The signs, and wonders and the demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. <laughs> Thank you, Father, that you do a work in here and in this place and in the midst of those that you send forth from this place. This is purely of you with no human power, man power in it. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. So I, I look forward to you know, being able to do something similar in every one of your lives for too long. Amen. Hallelujah. God, I boast in everybody in this place. Listen, you know we in partnership with Pastor Kelly. We're going with them. He's sent out of here. We're totally with them. If anybody says any different, you tell them that they don't know what they're talking about. We're so excited to see what God is doing in his life. I mean, I'm telling you right now, he just said to me, Pastor, I've got this pull on the heart. What do you think? He's so submitted to God. He's done it the right way. He's done it the apostolic way. He's done it the Word of God way. He, he's, he, he was willing to, he's willing to hear a no stay. But I'm telling you right now, there is a no, there is not such, no such thing as a no stay when it's time to go and do it. I mean, I'm just so excited. And what's going on with Paulina, uh, with Angelo and Paulina right now is they're going throughout Finland and over in Europe and how God is using them is so wonderful. They are part of our team. They are the company of people that, that are from out of here that you and I need to be continually praying for and supporting in every way. Okay? And so... You know, we want to be able to have when when the different ones like uh, Pastor Kelly and Angelo and Paulina and others come, we want to be able to have a place for them to stay. We want to have a car for them to drive. We want to have provision for them. And so we're, we want you to agree with us in that. You know, we were thinking about a couple of different ideas, but, you know, of things that we could do for provision. But you pray about it with us as well. And let's just see every time, a, a, you know, open door so that there's, you know, there's no, there's no issues there. Okay? Amen. It's great to be a part of the family of God, ain't it?